Thank you. Good morning, John. How are you? <sighs> Tired. Good morning, David. How are you? I'm great, dear. What a great day to be here and have a sing. John, I've been asking you to do that work. You're supposed to analyze the lyrics and let me have it. <sighs> I don't know what to do. This sucks. David, how are you going with learning the lyrics of that song? Well, my dear, I said I would do it. It's a bit of a challenge. One thing bothers me, though. I have no idea what they're about. David, I was scared you would say that. I think it's about sex. Really, Laura? That's what I was thinking. What a wonderful memory. <laughs> John, how's school? I hate it. I wish I was at home. David, after all these years, who thought you would be back at school having to learn words again, forced to learn the words of a song? I know, my dear, how wonderful is it to be here. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. This school is a beacon of light in the community. I can't get no satisfaction. I want what I want, and I want it now. I can't get no satisfaction. Gee, but I remember it well. <laughs> Many years ago, in, I saw the Young at Heart Choir from America perform in Melbourne. I was moved by what they were doing, and I, like everybody else in the audience, laughed and cried throughout the performance, and sometimes did both at the same time. I vowed then that I would do something similar in Bendigo, but I wanted to have young school children accompany the senior citizens. It was years before I was able to get the project off the ground. I approached our headmaster, and he encouraged me to make it happen. So one balmy, beautiful day in February 2011, we had 36 senior citizens pitch up for their first rock choir rehearsal. Well, I can tell you the fun started immediately because a gentleman approached me and he said, my dear, I've got it right. We will be doing something from Paint Your Wagon, aren't we? <laughs> it, it was a firm favorite for him. I was speechless and he said, and at least we have to learn Amazing Grace. So I looked at him and I said, you know, it's not going to happen. Not this year, not in this choir. In fact, never, ever will we be singing anything from Paint Your Wagon. <laughs> I started to, to teach the song uh, Forever Young because that's what I had decided to call the choir. I explained that I thought Bob Dylan had an appalling voice, a ghastly voice, but I thought he was a beautiful poet and that his music was gorgeous. At tea time, a lady came to me, deeply offended, and she said to me, I don't think I can possibly come back to this. You are so offensive in your behavior. I was speechless because I'd been trying so hard to be polite to everybody. <laughs> and I said to her, but I, I really, I don't understand. What have I done? And she said, well, we've just started. And already you're saying Bob's got a ghastly voice and you haven't warmed us up. We haven't done anything. It, the penny dropped, and I realized she thought Bob was in the choir. So I said to her, no, Bob's got nothing to do with us. He's alive and well and living in America. That broke the ice, which was great. I then introduced I Can't Get No Satisfaction. This was wonderful, because all the men had thought the song had been written especially for them. <laughs> the ladies put them right and said, no, not at all. Their entire lives, they'd not been able to get any satisfaction, so clearly the song had been written for them. We moved on from that song to the beautiful song by Amy Winehouse, Rehab, which they sort of enjoyed, but not, they weren't won over quite yet. 
And then we went, went on to the Ramones, I Want to Be Sedated. And of course, that is a wonderful song. It breaks the ice, and you cannot sing that song without being totally happy. By the end of the session, I think we all wanted to be sedated. Time to go home, and off they went. I was quite concerned that they had been offended and just too polite to uh, say so. The, on that day, the youngest person who came in was 64, and the oldest was 90. I took one look at this elderly gentleman, so dignified and beautiful, eloquent, clearly educated, and I was scared that I had offended him, and I just thought to myself, next week, he will not be back. I'll never see him again. That was such a stupid judgment call, and it's one of the first things that I learned with Forever Young. They all came back the next week and started bringing their friends. I did make mistakes with some of the lyrics. I did offend people unintentionally, and I've learned a lot throughout the process. But slowly, this choir became part of the fabric of the school, and the children started calling them the oldies with deep affection and with utter respect. And now we refer to them in front of them, about, we refer to them as the oldies. The children came into the choir rehearsals to sing for them and to be sung to. The oldies would always sing forever young to the students, and it's a beautiful moment we see the, the students crying because they're so moved. One little boy went home to his mother and he said, Thursdays at school are the best days because all the oldies come. And he has lots of friends in the oldies. His mother said, that's wonderful. She's delighted he's having a good day. And he said, but there's one old man who's really his best friend. And this fellow always shows him a thumbs up. And the mother said, that's great. But how does that happen if he's in the hall and you're supposed to be in the classroom? Oh, it's not a problem, said the lad. Not a problem at all. He asks to go to the toilet. And then he just walks past the hall, up and down, until the gentleman notices him, shows him the thumbs up. <laughs> he then goes back happily to class. This was happening every Thursday. This poor lad's probably missed years of schooling <laughs> by just attending those rehearsals. One of the older ladies was so proud of herself, she came to a rehearsal and she said, Laura, I was in the supermarket. And you know that song by the clash or the clang, something like that? I said, yep. Yeah. She said, it started playing in the supermarket. So I sang. It was London Burning by The Clash. She said, I was so proud of myself. I knew all the words. <laughs> and she said, do you know, everybody smiled at me. I said, oh, Linda, that's fantastic. Terrific song, she said, terrific song. Cannot wait for the concert. Other singers reported that they had a greater connection with their grandchildren. They had something in common. It was the music that they were listening to. I th guess one of those generations had a deeper understanding than the other, but it mattered not. As the friendships were formed in the choir, many stories came to light. Stories of loneliness, of longing, and profound loss that these singers had endured. And all these rock songs that we were learning had brought back memories of those occasions or events. And so what I thought was going to be a frivolous, fun endeavor actually became quite meaningful to the singers. Freddie Mercury's beautiful song, Who Wants to Live Forever, when sung by an older person, has a whole new meaning that you cannot help but be moved. Even the Bee Gees song, Staying Alive, really, it, it's a great, fun disco song, takes on a totally, totally different feeling. A lot of the people reported that they had a reason to get up out of bed now. They were hoping that I could make the rehearsals a bit later, but of course, no, we can't. We can't do everything. And, but it didn't matter. In 2013, we tried to extend the opportunities for the singers, and I invited artists to come and paint and photograph the singers. Rose Wilson was the art, one of the Archibald finalists that year, and she said to me, so pleased you phoned me. I I'm trying to understand what you're telling me. 
She said, but I have no idea. She said, I'm a bit confused. And I said, Rose, I'm a bit confused as well, but at a very high level. So maybe we can do something together. She said, you phoned the right person. She said, I love old people. Do you need more artists? And I said, hell yes. I need lots of artists because you're the only one I know of. And she phoned her friends, her art network in Trentham. And these beautiful people gave her their time and talent to come and paint the singers. They did the most amazing work. The photographers had the singers pose as punks and as goths and as grey nomads. We would go all over Bendigo and photograph the singers. Th that in itself was wonderful, to see these singers get dressed up as punks and goths and so on. But the comments were even more interesting. And I was frequently asked, but Laura, why would somebody do this? I had no answer for that. Anyway, we had a lot of fun. The art, was, uh, uh, the art show was held in Castle, Maine, and it was a, a small exhibition of about 20 or 25 pieces. But it was seen by over 10,000 people. This was a wonderful event for the singers. It is a widely held belief that the teenagers of today are really boring and bo uh, bored and don't offer anything to society. And you often hear that senior citizens are boring and have nothing to contribute. With a forever young qu uh, rock choir, the magic really happens when our music students accompany the singers. They rehearse independently and then we bring them together. The camaraderie between the two groups is quite staggering. The oldies love that the children give of their talent and their skills and their time, and the children are gobsmacked that the oldies would be singing these songs. One lady, a couple of years back, said to me, I cannot even remember the song that we were doing, it became such a horrible memory. It was her favourite song, and could she sing a solo? So I said, I'd love you to do that, but I would need to hear you beforehand. When, uh, and, and she kept putting it off. She said, oh, I'll get to it, we'll get to it, we'll get to it. It was about two weeks before the concert, and I said to her, I have to hear you now. And it was hideous. It was hideous beyond words. And I don't want anybody to have a bad experience and go on stage and fail. So I said to her, you just can't do it. You just can't do it. We will do it as a choir. I'm terribly sorry. And she was a little bit sad because she loved the song. And I went off to have a drink of water and just compose myself because I hate doing that to anybody. I came back and she said, you don't know everything about me. And I said, I know nothing about you. She said, I'm a very good dancer. And I thought to myself, oh, God. <laughs> I'm going to have to do something with this. I said, that's great. She said, there's a, a song somewhere in our repertoire, and I can do some go-go dancing. So I said, right, let's give it a go. Anyway, we chose a song by Hot Chocolate, and she was right. She was a terrific dancer. Her mum had died about six months prior to the concert, and this woman had not had a good night's sleep since her mum's death. The night of the concert, she wowed the audience she was amazing. She had the most magnificent moves. The audience went ballistic for her. She had the best night. She also had the best night's sleep for the first time in months. And she slept well ever since. She, she believes that having that opportunity da to dance and express herself on stage just relieved her of tension and gave new meaning to her life. The Bob Dylan song, is a blessing and a wish. And our children who accompany the singers are so lucky because the Bob Dylan line said, may your hands always be busy, may your feet always be swift. And for our children, they are so busy with a choir and everything else they do, and their feet are so swift, they don't have time to think. And we celebrate that. I think it's a wonderful thing to celebrate. For our older people, the next line of Bob uh, Dylan's song, may you always be courageous, stand upright and, in, and strong. That is very hard for some of them, and on a daily day, a basis, they try and they try and they try. I think that is also worth celebrating. As for my own judgments about 
the singers who were coming to my choir. That 90-year-old gentleman is now in his mid-90s. His body is frail and getting increasingly frail, but it doesn't matter that much at choir because his best friend, whom he met at choir, is only 88 years old and is well able to get David the cups of tea and his walker when he needs to. David's mind is still agile, though. He often thinks of love and lust and longing. The songs have particular meaning to him. When we stop to celebrate youth, I think it's time that we really should pause and stop and think about the young at heart, because for them, things are not always that easy. Thank you. We're going to watch a bit of a clipping of some footage taken over many years. Thank you. I feel it's fabulous. I think it's a fantastic growth point for both the kids and, and for us as well. I think that's, yeah, it's just wonderful. It's wonderful to watch the kids relate to the oldies as well. enjoy the outlet that it gives the, some of these older people. Some of them, it's the only time they go out, but then it's the highlight of their week. And so it's socialising, it's learning new things. They have to learn new music the whole time, which is, as we know, fabulous for anyone, particularly at their age. There's people in there who are in their 90s, and they're learning songs that they've never heard before. So it's fabulous for them. And it's fabulous for the kids to see them do that.